It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Buccaneers and the 49ers. And it's coming up next on Madden Football. From the future site of Super Bowl 60 in a few years' time, there's a look inside Levi's Stadium here in Santa Clara. Today, we've got an intriguing NFC matchup lined up here as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the San Francisco 49ers. With Charles Davis to my left, I'm Brandon Gordon, and CD, it's a good time to be a 49er fan. The roster is loaded. You got stars on both sides of the ball. The time seems like it's now. Aside from health, what needs to happen for the Niners to make a Super Bowl run? Well, if you're a team trying to play them, you're always trying to figure out how do I slow down an offense that seems to morph and change from week to week and attack defense's weaknesses. And then on the other side, how are you going to block those pass rushers? How are you going to block those guys who get after the quarterback on every snap? Good luck. This is a loaded 49ers team. And then for the visiting box, you know, all of a sudden, Super Bowl 55 feels like it was a long time ago. Tom Brady retired. Some of the stalwarts of that team have moved on. They did win the NFC South last year, but they did so with a losing record at 8-9. and nine. And sometimes when you have a chance to begin again, other people emerge and play at a level that you don't expect. And that's what Tampa Bay needs from this team in 2023. Here's the former Illini kicker, Chase McLaughlin, to get us started. And we are underway from Santa Clara. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. With the Niners offense set to go to work, and it's last year's revelation, Brock Purdy, who leads him out in season number two from Iowa State. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They are sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Back to throw, Purdy. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Purdy with it on third and long. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down of the process. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. He's got Ayuk once again. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical that it would be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. So eight yards on the completion there, and that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Here's Purdy. Gets this to his running back. It's Christian McCaffrey. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. 
Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher, and that's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. And it's caught. And the Niners are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. McCaffrey is in. Touchdown, 49ers. Well, we talk a lot about Christian McCaffrey and what he can do in the open field, and it's easy to gloss over how tough he can be to stop near the goal line. And he shows you just how tough he is on that carry as he takes it into the end zone. Jake Moody now for the point after. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. From the end zone, here's Devin Tompkins. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. And he's a guy who plays with a lot of emotion. He's learned how to channel it really positively because when he throws the football downfield and makes a big play, he'll be the first guy downfield to celebrate with you. But also, when his team needs that confidence, when they need that joy, they turn to him, and he's ready to provide it. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. They go play action. Mayfield. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through. Pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. On second down, they'll run with White. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That one, a first down pickup of eight. A couple of nice carries back to back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these are bare bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yard you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five, more, five or more yards each time. That's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line down. Good sign on the opening drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And they run the option on second down. And great block 
looking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35 yard line. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the 8-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Here's White. Down at the two. Broke through first contact, but ultimately stopped shy of the goal line. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. That's good hard running right there on first and goal. That gets him down to the two and puts a lot more pressure on that defense. From the two now, second and goal. Again, this is White, but he will go backwards as he stopped for a loss. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Now Mayfield on third and goal. was strong in coverage. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And his kick here is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Purdy now to throw. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Well, it looked like a quick hitter, a three-step drop. But when it's not there, what do you do? He elects to try and escape through the mass of bodies up the middle, and he does so and picks up positive yardage. Purdy bootlegging it. And this is going to be incomplete. And that is how you respond after taking one on the chin to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. Back deep for the Bucs is Devin Tompkins. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And taken right at the 35. Officially just 27 yards there on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. 
And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too. And gets by him and out of the daylight. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Play fake, Mayfield. That is caught, it's Chris Godwin. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight yard line. Give him 30 yards there. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field, pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They run straight ahead here with White. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. He'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Well, look at this, a tight end carry. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. Mayfield looks to throw. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's Chris Godwin who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. Up past the 30, second down coming up. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. Under a minute to go, clock running at a back and forth first quarter of play. Purdy looking to throw. Thrown across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield, Jr. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Partner, I think this will want to arrive very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. 
And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. First down, here's White. Nice his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be, but still all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Here's second and seven. Mayfield on play action. Looking for Godwin and he's got him complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Ten seven, our score after one, right here on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football as they go to work on a first and goal. Mayfield to throw it. Hammering for the goal line. He loses the football. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you probably talked about since training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick. Throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The San Francisco's offense returns to the field. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little game there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. He was trying to do anything he could to get that final little bit for the first down. Instead, he lost the ball. Yeah, and he was short of the first down, but not by much. Trying his best, as you noted, to get there. Sometimes that extra effort can cost you. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. 
Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Purdy to throw it on first down. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid gain to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. On second down, McCaffrey. It's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. First down, San Francisco, the pick up 14 yards. Part of their strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put up more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. Purdy throw complete here to IU. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first down, it's Purdy. Got a man. That's Ayuk. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. So from the 22, here's second and two. Purdy from the gun. That's caught by Debo Samuel. Touchdown, San Francisco. A 22-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers have tied the ball game with a chance to take the lead. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They manage to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Moody good with the extra point, and with it, his guys take the lead here by a point. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Sometimes I think these defensive tackles get a little bit of a bum rap. We just see them as big guys that eat up blockers for others to make tackles. Oftentimes, they're quicker than they get credit for. And this time, he uses quickness to make a play. Open man, it's Palmer. They'll give him four yards there. And third and eight now. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete, and he has a big gain in 
inside the 40 before being dropped. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Well, he worked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps, and delivers a big play here for this offense. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. They go with White on the counter, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. But not many guys who could blow up plays like Chase Young. He did it again there. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. Here's Mayfield. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked up by Charvarius Ward down the left sideline. And he is not quite going to make it all the way in. They'll mark him down right about the one-yard line. So they get the interception, and, and almost as importantly, a big return after that. And who was the guy that saved the touchdown partner? The guy who threw the interception a lot of times. He just gives it the old old way, but give him credit. He went old school. He was determined not to make this a pick six, and he got there in time to make the tackle. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of... And across the chalk, into the end zone, it's a four. McCaffrey with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Niners are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Moody good with the extra point, and the lead is up to eight. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The attention shifting back to Chris Godwin and the rest of the Tampa offense. He's done his part, but so far it's been in a losing effort, so they've got to fix something. But that doesn't mean changing anything, the way they're throwing the ball around and his catches and production. Keep doing that. They're going to have to fix some things likely on defense to try and slow down their opponents. But so far he's north of 100 yards receiving. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. They'll try the right side here with White, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Mayfield now from the 50. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. The offense on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and seven. Now Mayfield. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. Now he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. 
Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and drag it to make sure he gets it done. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Mayfield. He'll get that out to the flat to right. And he's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Going right side is right. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sip through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Second and seven. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. You're darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. To throw Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And yeah, the Buccaneers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Second and goal from inside the five. He'll try again. And good work there defensively as they're able to keep him out of the end zone. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. White, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chipping. And his kick is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. In motion left goes a tight end. Oh, and they set the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Delay of game. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still second down. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Third down, here's McCaffrey. And a short pick up here as he'll get up to about the 22-yard line. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and they will take over first and 10. A one more drive here for the Buccaneer offense in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. The Bucs forced to use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Mayfield on first down. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Javon Hargrave, the D-tackle, getting the sack. So we've hit halftime here in Santa Clara with the 49ers out in front. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw the former All-Pro Christian McCaffrey up to his old tricks in that first half. He chipped in a couple of touchdown runs as he was running with determination right from the word go. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
So this just a five-point game as we resume action in the second half on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Bucks' offense set to begin this third quarter. And Charles, some things to like about that first half, ultimately trailing here, but certainly this deficit is manageable. So curious to see what adjustments they may have made at intermission. As am I, because I think things bode well for a possible comeback because I thought a lot of their best reps in the first half came through the passing game. They were hitting the open receivers, taking whatever the coverage gave them and making it work well for themselves. Now, they just want to pick up the pace of scoring a little bit. So I expect them to come out, continue to throw the ball effectively. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Opting to run again here with White. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Mayfield down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. White, he'll try the left side. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. Throwing, Mayfield. On the left side, a catch by White. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Here now, third and a yard. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now again up the middle, this is White. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Second and six. They'll go up the middle with White. And he's going to be met at about the 43. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for it in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Play fake, Mayfield. This will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 24-yard line. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. They go play action. Mayfield. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. My, my, maybe that ball's two yards shorter. It's going to give them the lead because you have a receiver running free there. That's a tough one to miss on. 
Now is second and ten. Now back to the ground game with White. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Mayfield looks to throw. And a catch right side by Evans. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. They'll run for it. This is White. And they are going to stop him on fourth and one as they'll wind up going backwards. The Bucks try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Partner, when you see a running play stop short like that, you just know that the defensive front, they won the battle of leverage and created the push back into the opposing backfield. And for the offensive coordinator, whether you had one yard to go or 20 yards to go on fourth down, now you're probably saying, oh, maybe I should have passed it, right? Yeah, hindsight is always 20-20. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And he'll be drawn just shy of the 35 at the 34. A pickup of 17 on a play that originated at the 17. A good run there off right tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. Play action. Now Purdy. That's complete. It's Kyle Juszczyk. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Well, they've certainly spread the ball around so far, but they're definitely getting everyone involved now when you're throwing it to the fullback. Just shows how versatile this offense is and how everyone is a threat. On first down, this is McCaffrey, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. This drive starts with two steps forward and now one back. A pair of first downs, and here a loss of yardage. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Purdy looking to throw. He'll fire this deep for Ayuk. And this is caught at the 20. This offense, they were dynamic in the first half. The halftime break, that didn't slow them down at all. Big strike here in the third quarter. It's almost as if they were saying, it's not just our skill in the first half is getting this done, it's confidence as well. And confidence has taken over this game in a big way. How about these strikes that we're seeing? An extra point try now for Moody. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. A drive there of just four plays. And it was Brandon Ayuk capping it off with the touchdown reception. Touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. So out come the Bucks now. 
But they've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Mayfield to throw it. Slant left, going to be caught by Palmer. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, a run from White. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. But they went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. They go right back to White here on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. He completes it right side of White. And that's good for a gain of six. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. Field on the bootleg. There's a short one taken in by Otten. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. First down, here's White. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That whole thing was thrown off track thanks to the defense of Fred Warner. Really nice play. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. On second down, they'll run with White. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Looks like another empty possession offensively, and you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. Now, Brandon Ayuk ready to bring out the rest of this offense here for this upcoming series. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards. But, hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes... That means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Another run with McCaffrey on second down. 
And he'll be stopped at the 46. Gain of three. Third and three. Purdy. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a 49ers first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he'll be taken down after a decent gain, and that will bring us to the end of this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's 49er football here. They've got the lead as well as we get set to start the fourth and final quarter. Purdy now on second down. Connects with Kittle underneath. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he'll be brought down at the 37. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. Yeah, I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try to finish off the game. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. The Niners on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. A throwing here, Purdy. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he's going to have a Niners first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. And that's one of those where it feels like backyard football in a sense. You say, forget about the route. Just run to the open spot in the middle of the field, and I'll find you. Good throw, good concentration on the catch, and they pick up the first down. Back to the ground attack here. It's McCaffrey. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. It, yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Now Purdy. He's going to go up top for the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Going for the knockout blow right there. I think if I'm up two scores, I'd be worried about an interception, but playing this way is what got them this lead. So you may as well ride it out to the end. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Here's Purdy. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. That he won't quite make it. He needed six, he got about five, fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They'll run with a fullback, use check. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. I don't care what he's listed in the program. Fullback, running back, tailback, it doesn't matter. He ran that play like a fullback, just like the old days when we saw the fullback dive. How about him picking that one up? Only well, needed a yard on fourth down. That's what he's there for, right? Exactly. Line him up, short yardage situation, and say, here it is, big man. Go get it. 
And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And down here, first and goal. If it's not there, don't force it. You've got at least two, if not three more shots at it. So that's a wise move to get rid of it. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, he'd go ahead and fling and try and get a third one. Yeah, now from this spot on third down, I think he'd probably throw it here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. They, they won't even send in a running play here, I don't believe. I think they go ahead and try and throw it for a touchdown. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly and neither did he. They got to him just in time and now that forced him to make a decision with this fourth down call. Can this defense hold him out? Here we go now, fourth and goal from the two. Back to throw, Purdy. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had the play call on fourth and goal, but it's dropped in the end zone. And the Bucks defense, they'll celebrate the goal line stand. And I am not sure, partner, there what the mindset was to go for it. I don't know. And some teams just feel that possession is the key to everything. They just want to have the football in their hands. No matter how it goes to the other team, they just don't trust doing that. So they say, listen, go for it and try and finish it ourselves. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You can have the first one for the second one to even matter. Mayfield now on second down. But it's caught, Tompkins. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. First target, first catch at a first down. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Here's a second and eight. Mayfield steps away to his left. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it. And he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. They run straight ahead here with White. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. And he's not even going to come close to picking up the first. They stop him right at the line of scrimmage. The Bucks try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Niners take over in terrific field position. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. 
77 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. From the 23, here's a second down and four. Again, they run again, it's McCaffrey. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There was absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. This now a third and four. Shotgun now with Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a 49ers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Purdy to throw it on first down. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. That's Kalijah Kansi in to get him down. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Purdy from the gun. That's complete to the tight end runner. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good. So after four touchdowns in the game for this offense, this time they're forced into taking the three. But you did mention four touchdowns, right? So four out of five, not too bad. I think that's a pretty good record for them. Moody back out there now to send this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This is White on the screen. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, back door to them, and that time worked well for a solid gain. Second down, Mayfield. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field, it's popped up in the air. I expect someone to catch it, doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense, because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Mayfield down. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. 
Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. Boy, hard to catch your breath. Another big play looming, fourth and three. He's got his target. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Mayfield looks to throw. And he's got him. Got his man on the end route. Complete. Now second down and a few inches. Mayfield. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism. Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Here's Baker. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a box first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. And he's brought down. A nice little juke move that preceded it, but not much thereafter. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. The nice thing is that you've still got all your timeouts in the middle of the field. That should still be an option, especially if you see the defenders pitching the sideline. You can run a little seam route right here and pick up some nice yardage. Well, the faithful in full war here in Santa Clara. This is third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. The decision made for them, they've got to go. It's fourth down. Desperation time, Mayfield on fourth down. That is caught, and he's going to have the Bucks first down by a couple of yards, it would appear, as they're able to convert on fourth and five. Mayfield. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one to five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, it doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> So with an even 30 seconds to go, everything will come down to this onside kick. And it's the 49ers who recover it, and that ought to just about do it. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And 
I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. The Bucs forced to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Purdy down to a knee, and that should be the final act of the ball game. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. side of midfield they needed something near a miracle and they couldn't get it done yeah the effort that was good very good in fact they were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity couldn't get it done but a nice game overall so that's a wrap for charles davis i'm brandon gone and this has been a presentation of the nfl on ea sports for more check us out at easports.com the 49ers get the win here at home as we say so long from Santa Clara.